Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. You ever feel like, I don't know, despite your best efforts, sometimes just goes ass up anyway? I've been feeling a lot like that lately. So picture this, I'm cruising through the desert on my bike and my phone's blowing up harder than Chernobyl. I finally stop and check my phone thinking, you know, it finally happened. I finally got canceled for some dumb shit I said. But lo and behold, literally 1200 notifications later, I find out that all it was was I simply got a shout out from perhaps Canada's hottest photographer, Peter McKinnon. Peter dropped a very poignant take on AI usage and the new Instagram label that was installed. He made the case that a photo with such a wild look like the one shot on Kodak Aerochrome could trigger, you know, an AI holy war across platforms or potentially even something worse. Getting slapped with that automatic AI label on Instagram itself. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about rare film. Not just any rare film though. The OG Fire Kush Master Dank Loud, this shit shot Tupac. Kodak Aerochrome. Probably my favorite film stock ever. I've been saving my last roll for him. So Jason, this roll is coming your way. When I got the roll in the mail, I started sweating, you know, in different places than usual about where to shoot this stuff because it's not exactly cheap or abundant. And you know, looking at current trends, there is a good chance I'll never be able to shoot this stuff in medium format ever again. Luckily, I had an upcoming trip to Wyoming and I figured that the Tetons would be a good place to start and you know, just rip some absolute flaming hot bangers. So I brought the roll along with me. Anyway, after the drug dog at TSA found the roll sandwiched in my ass because I didn't want them to send it through the scanners. They decided to pop open the light tight container the aerochrome was inside of anyway, despite me getting down on my hands and knees and literally begging them not to. Dear Jason, hope you enjoyed the shit out of this aerochrome. It doesn't say Peter's name on it, but trust me, it's from him. You can watch his video if you want. Anyway, we finally touched down in the western frontier and I was ready to shoot something, if not myself, because that roll of aerochrome, it's possible it could have already been flashed. This film was actually discontinued in, I think it was 2010, and it's highly sensitive due to its uh, infrared makeup. That's why it's uh, recommended that you unload it and load it in almost darkness. Something that I didn't really have time to explain to the TSA agent before, you know, they made me cry. Load in total darkness. Well. That ain't gonna happen today. They already took a look at it at the airport anyway, so this is kind of close to darkness. Not really. Ow. There we go. Tension. Let's do it. I decided the best weapon for the job was undoubtedly gonna be the Hasselblad 501C for a myriad of reasons, not just sex appeal. For starters, I have an A16 back for the system, which gives me 16 photos on a roll of 120 uh, on the 645 format. A little unusual for the Hassi system, and all my friends definitely give me shit about it, but who's laughing now? Probably still them, because they've all seen me at my worst. Additionally, the Carl Zeiss lenses for the system are sharper than anyone needs them to be. And what do you know, they also perform incredibly well on infrared. For reference, here I was using the 60mm 3.5, which I like quite a bit. Okay. If this expired... Here's my shot. <laughs> so... Filters are very important for this film stock. Uh, if you just decide to raw dog it in your camera, no filter, then it'll look very, very blue and just kind of indistinct. You need a pretty heavy warming filter to cut through all the blue radiation and sort things out, I suppose. A lot of people decide to use yellow filters to go with a more, I guess, pinkish look. I personally prefer to use a heavy orange filter to get more of a violent red magenta look. Here's some aerochrome that I've shot in the past, just so you know that I'm not a total f up most of the time. Anyway, enough chatter. I had 16 frames of 120 of this stuff to get through, the likes of which I'd never seen before. So thank you, Peter, for making my dreams come true. I'm sorry for name dropping you in the title, but as my mom always says, play has got to play. Shot numero uno. And yeah, it's f***ed up beyond all comprehension. I mean, I guess it's okay. I'm not really. The colors are kind of cool. It just looks like we stumbled on the side of an active nuclear test or something. Literally any information in the highlights just completely disappeared. But you know, it's like what my wise old man said before he completely disappeared. I'm gonna go buy cigarettes and lotto tickets. Okay, so what happened here? 
it's complicated. This film stock isn't exactly Portra 400 where, you know, if you overexpose, you get nice pastel tones. Kodak Aerochrome is a color positive film, which means it has substantially less latitude and ultimately means that you need to be a little bit more precise with how you measure the light. More on that in a little bit. Okay, this shot isn't really blown to hell and back. It actually looks kind of properly exposed for the most part. Well, don't get used to it. Truth be told, I'm not really 100% sure what happened here. It could be like one of several things, or it could literally be all of them. Like I mentioned before, TSA at LAX thought it was crucial to pop open the light tight canister that this roll of film was stored in. That ultimately doesn't really explain why one shot would be nuked and one shot would be normal. Another possibility is that expired slide film totally kind of sucks ass a lot of times. The quality ultimately depends on how the film was stored over time, but ultimately with expired slide film, you never really know what you're going to get most of the time. And I've personally never really found a good way to compensate for it. The 10 years one stop rule only really applies to C41 film and I guess black and white film kinda. It's a much more nuanced thing than that and this is not the place to talk about it. Do take into account that this expired slide film is a little bit different as well. It's technically expired infrared slide film. So the behavior of a film stock like this past expiration is something we know even less about because it's far less common to shoot. Dude, the light's changing so fast. It's either Cadbury eggs or, or shit. Sideways. Oh. Can you actually stay there for me? Can I take a picture of you right there? Yeah. Just look right at camera for me. Thank you so much. This shot is probably one of the best I shot that day. Sure, it's still hemorrhaging light, but I like the layering and the framing of this guy, who's totally not pre-haircut McKinnon. And then, yeah, of course, the boat full of people, the aqua blue tones of the water, and the uh, vast mountain ranges in the distance make it all come together quite nicely. Okay, let's talk about what I think was really the issue here besides literally me. I think the core issue of this was the TTL metering on the Hassey. After talking with my friend and fellow tuber Alex out Aerochrome and his own trials and tribulations with it, he pointed me in the direction of uh, Rob Alwyn's article about the topic, stating that the nominal ISO rating is 400, already including the use of a yellow number 12 filter. It doesn't really ever explicitly say that in the data sheet for Aerochrome, at least not anywhere I could find, but for the sake of argument here, let's let it ride. What this really means is you should meter the scene at 400 ISO outside of any filter compensation and then slap the filter on. You shouldn't rely on it through the lens metering or TTL metering with your filter on because technically you might be doubling up on filter compensation. And I think that was the issue here. I was just casually walking around metering through the filter the whole time like some ignorant and destructive child. Anyway, with the Tetons glowing Rocky Mountain Blue, except in Wyoming, I shot this photo and it's probably my favorite. 
No, not this unflushable turd that you leave at a gas station bathroom and then run out before they can stop you. This one, actually. A shot of this cool-ass dog and his dude who seemingly just wandered down the trail to the bridge to ponder, you know, as guys do. The colors of this photo are wonderful, and our guy here is framed nicely between the break and the tree line. The leading lines of the bridge take you right to him, and of course the setting is absolutely killer with the mountain in the deep background. That was the last shot. I'm very sad that it's over. Peter, I hope I did you justice. But if you wanna do justice to your own work, I highly recommend putting together a portfolio on a website with today's sponsor, Squarespace. How are you gonna get your work out there for the masses to see? We live in the digital age after all, so how about putting together a website through Squarespace, an industry-leading website design platform? Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates or get started crafting your visionary website with something called Blueprint AI, a new intuitive feature in Squarespace's building toolkit. Blueprint AI is an automated way to generate the foundation of your website by answering a few simple questions at the get-go, and then letting the algorithm figure out the rest for you. With about 1.4 billion potential design combinations and the brand new Fluid Engine, a sleek new way to drag and drop elements of your website wherever at your disposal, you can build the website of your dreams faster than ever before and make sure it is truly, you know, one of a kind. And best of all, if you run into any snags at any point, you can get in touch with Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support or find the answer you need amongst the always available help forums. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. If you use the code grainy days, at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So with all that technical jargon behind us, here it is. Here's the reason that I cannot come to a true conclusion about really what f***ed this roll up. I have always shot Aerochrome the exact same way in the past and it has always been fine. I've shot it in my Canon AE-1 that has a TTL meter and of course in my Leica M6 which also has a TTL meter. I've even used the exact same orange filter for literally all of it. The meter on the Hassi Prism is reliable as well. After I finished this roll of Aerochrome, I shot like 10 rolls of Ektachrome through the system and it was all business as usual, but you know, more on that some other time. Furthermore, some shots were kind of exposed properly or at least semi-properly and they were all metered the exact same way across the board, which only lends creed ins to the fact that this is an expired infrared slide film and you just never really know how it's gonna react. You just gotta hope it works. Like how I hope you're not naked when you watch my videos. That's why I kind of think one of two routes needs to be taken if you ever want to shoot Aerochrome in your lifetime. Option number one is definitely less sexy, but like me, you can get a digital camera and have it converted to full spectrum and then, you know, just find a way to recreate it digitally. Let's be real for a second. Hold the app. The remaining Aerochrome out there is only getting more expired by the second and more expensive by the second. It's becoming a pretty huge gamble to shoot in the field and who wants that kind of pressure while they're out doing photography, right? Here's a photo taken on, you know, real aerochrome, and then a comparison shot that I took a moment later on my digital infrared setup. It's a, a little close, but it's not exactly the same, right? It'll actually never quite be the same. Anyway, option number two is that you can find some flaming hot Mountain Dew and chug it, butt chug it if that's your thing, and begin a campaign to get Kodak to get their shit together and hashtag bring back aerochrome. Though from my own experience going this route, Kodak, and your primary care physician will both ghost you.